I'm quite proud to introduce Mike Latzer from MasterCard, who's going to talk about threat casting, what it is and what are we doing about it. So please put your hands together and uh, join me in welcoming Mike to the stage. Hello, everyone, and welcome back from lunch. Always good to be the first one uh, after everybody stuffed themselves full of food. So I hope you had a nice meal. And as John said, my name is Mike Latza. I'm the Regional Chief Security Officer for MasterCard here in Eastern Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And really what I wanted to talk to you about today is a, a framework and methodology that MasterCard's adopted for anticipating and responding to future threats. And we call that threat casting. So I want to ask you a question to start things off in order uh, to set the tone for the day. So let's take a trip down memory lane. Think back 10 or 15 years ago and all the personal technology that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. What didn't exist 10, 15 years ago? Personally, I can reflect smartphones, smart watches, social media, ride-hailing services, and um, streaming services are all examples of technology that how, it's, how fast has it evolved in the past decade or two, transforming the way we live, work, and interact. The world we live in today looks vastly different from just a few years ago. Technology continues to evolve, connecting the disconnected and making our lives more convenient. However, as we've heard many times this morning, our inter as our interactions increasingly go digital, there's a shift. Criminals are also following suit. As threats become more common, they're also becoming more sophisticated. And corporations, critical national infrastructure, healthcare, and government services are all prime targets for threat actors. There's no exception. We're all living in an uncertain world. In this uncertain landscape, many organizations, including my own, are utilizing threat casting as a crucial tool for resilience planning and anticipating future threats. Notably in the US, several government agencies, including the US Army and the US Secret Service, have adopted threat casting as a methodology. So what exactly is threat casting? Well, it's a structured and clear-cut approach to envisioning various potential future scenarios and threats within a complex and unpredictable environment. Through collaborations with organizations, and on, we utilize expert interviews, workshops, and operational exercises to forecast future conditions and potential threats. This process can equip your decision makers with concrete future indicators and actionable strategies to either shape the future or mitigate those potential threats. So I strongly encourage all organizations to consider adopting threat casting as part of their own resiliency planning, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. Because threat casting can act as a shield against strategic surprise. When a crisis occurs or an opportunity arises, leaders aren't caught off guard. Instead, their response is more informed, more strategic. We've been here before, we know where to start. So how do we go back to the future? Well, we attempted to use the DeLorean, but it didn't work out so well, so we'll revert to a more traditional process. At its core, threat casting is an advanced form of threat forecasting. It's just like it sounds. While traditional approaches typically look one, two, three years in the future, threat casting really challenges us to look 10 years into the future. This extended time frame allows us as organizations to stretch our imagination and envision a wide array of potential future threats. It provides us with a structured process to gather diverse inputs and engage in exercises aimed at exploring future scenarios. Simply put, threat casting is a tabletop exercise looking 10 years into the future. Additionally, threat casting equips us with a th uh, systemic framework to retrospectively analyze these imagined future scenarios. This enables us to identify proactive measures now to disrupt mitigate and recover from anticipated threats effectively. To enrich our threat casting exercises, we've partnered with a renowned futurist from Arizona State University, Brian David Johnson. He sort of pioneered this concept, um, the idea of threat casting, and there's a lot of literature out there from him you can look up. Working with Brian, we, we assemble uh, on an annual basis a, div a diverse group of global experts from both the public and private sectors, representing a wide spectrum of cultural, sociological, economic, and scientific backgrounds. Similar to business planning, threat casting is a, a recurring annual endeavor for us. This iterative approach enables us to nurture our relationships, expand our thinking, and refine our ideas year after year. 
By envisioning multiple futures involving diverse demographics globally, we can iteratively refine our strategies and preparedness to address the multifaceted challenges and opportunities ahead. As an example of this collaborative engagement and how we've been taking this methodology globally to various regions outside the U.S., we recently partnered with the UAE Banks Federation, all the CISOs from the large and small banks, as well as the uh, central bank chief risk officer, and held a rapid threat casting looking at the aspirational strategy of the UAE financial ecosystem against emerging technologies such as AI, quantum computing, and Internet of Things. And from that, we've been able to identify potential disruptions to those aspirations that can inform their roadmap and planning uh, for the future of the UAE financial ecosystem. So this is an example of how it can be utilized. So what is the purpose of threat casting, and why should we consider adopting this framework? The primary objective behind threat casting for us is to assist our chief security officer and our executive leadership team in anticipating and planning for future threats. This helps us extend our security roadmap. Think about your day to day, as we've, uh, we've heard mostly uh, all morning. You know, in, a, in this fast paced environment where most of our staff's deeply eng uh, engrossed in current threats, current projects, it's natural to prioritize the immediate tasks at hand. However, this focus on the present can really hinder our ability to think far enough into the future. When do we ever stop and think, what, what are the threats going to be to my business five or ten years down the line? To effectively prepare for future threats, we must pause and shift our focus to that horizon. These exercises, through doing threat casting, it can serve as a vital tool to help us identify and prioritize potential threats that might lie, may lie ahead that we can't even see yet. This allows us to generate actionable insights into both possible and probable future threats and develop recommendations and strategies to address these challenges and fortify our resilience against the problems of tomorrow, starting today. So it's really about being proactive versus reactive. It's also important to acknowledge that the future is not singular, but rather comprises multiple potential scenarios. Threat casting allows us to explore these diverse futures and prepare accordingly. As I was saying, if you think back 10 years ago and the threats we were facing and then what we're facing today with the onset of AI, generative AI, and some of the emerging technology, couldn't have seen a lot of this stuff coming. Recently, our threat casting exercises over the past year or two have focused specifically on emerging disruptive technologies such as quantum computing, the Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence. Over the next decade, the widespread adoption of these emerging technologies will expose greater vulnerabilities, providing ample opportunities for malicious actors, whether they be nation states, criminals, corporations, or individuals, to exploit data and identities for fraudulent purposes. As new technologies are introduced, they inevitably bring along new threats and risks. Consequently, the opportunities for fraud will multiply, driven not only by financial motives, but also by political and ideological agendas, as we've seen. So, how do we prepare for a threat casting exercise, or how could you prepare for a threat casting exercise? Um, well, there's a preparation phase which involves collecting information from those subject matter experts and developing the research question. And then we host a tabletop exercise. This can be anywhere from a day and a half to two hours, as we did with the central bank. This brings together the diverse stakeholders, such as yourselves, uh, those from academia, law enforcement, government, to come together and explore these future threats. Really think through what, is the, what are the threats of the future, how will we experience in them, experience them and what are the flags and indicators that those threats are materializing. So the first thing we do in preparation is to define the research question. So every exercise is driven by a research question and prompts. And as I mentioned a minute ago, our focus over the past few years has been around all the emerging technology that we've spoke about already today. So over a period of four months, working with that futurist, Brian David Johnson, we conduct in-depth interviews with various subject matter experts across diverse countries and fields. These interviews are based on open-ended questions related to that research topic. The gathered insights from these interviews are meticulously recorded, transcribed, and synthesized, and they identify key areas and groupings to be addressed during the actual exercise itself. This lays the groundwork for the meaningful discussions. So what about the exercise itself? As I've said, you can do an exercise in as little as an hour or two, uh, or you can do it over a full day and a half. It's really about how in-depth you, you want to go um, and how much time you have on hand with key stakeholders. Sometimes it's hard to get um, key stakeholders in a room for that long. 
Similar to the interview process, the workshop brings together a diverse group of individuals. You don't want a bunch of security managers. You want a diverse group. You could do it uh, cross-functionally. You could bring in um, various business leaders, HR, legal, et cetera, for their view on a specific topic. We ensure a wide range of perspectives by carefully grouping those participants to foster diversity within each breakout group. Throughout the workshop, the primary focus is the research question. We ask the participants to really think creatively about future threats and explore potential scenarios to identify those gates, flags, and indicators that could signal the materialization of the threat. Then, after the participants identify a person in a time experiencing a threat in the future, they engage in a process of backcasting, working backward from the envisioned future threat to understand how we can mitigate, avoid, or disrupt them effectively. And then at the conclusion of the workshop, those insights are shared amongst the different groups for cross-pollination and collective learning. So what do we do with the insights? Uh, in MasterCard, obviously, if we're doing it um, with, with the futurist and on a big scale, we have the capability to produce a report, which I can share with anybody uh, who, you know, who would like a copy of that. We have them from the last four or five years. But the findings from each breakout group are synthesized with that re research that was done during the preparation phase to inform a deliverable report. And this can be really leveraged with your business to drive anything from budget requests, inform a security roadmap, uh, planning, and re resourcing. In the reports we develop, we really analyze uh, you know, what are the actions within our control to manage these future threats effectively? What are the warning events or indicators that would signal the progression towards a specific threat future? How will we realize that it's materializing? Also, what are the threats we may face in the future? What's the diverse spectrum of threats we may face? And this helps us inform next steps around people, process, and technology enhancements to disrupt or mitigate those threats. So that's how we leverage the report within MasterCard and also with our partner organization. So MasterCard's really embraced this uh, methodology. We do it on an annual basis. It's become part of our security culture and, and something that's really been useful for us. Uh, the methodology's been out there for about a decade, and we've really been honing our approach to it over the last four to five years. Notably, a previous exercise we conducted, I think it was around 2017 or 2018, envisioned what our res um, response to a global pandemic would be. And as you, as you know, this could be really instrumental for us. Once COVID-19 hit, we were able to move a lot faster because we had generated a playbook off that exercise uh, in anticipation of, of such a threat. Importantly, the threats that we identify aren't exclusive to MasterCard. They concern all organizations. Recasting is not confined to us. It's a global endeavor, and we're committed to fostering a secure global digital ecosystem. Each year, we engage in threat casting exercises, collaborating with partners, and particip participating in industry alliances. Specifically, we've joined forces with various entities within the financial sector to collectively tackle these challenges. Through this collaborative effort, we're able to bring insights to build a comprehensive understanding of the future threat landscape. Notably, we've shared our process with a group of seven G7 cyber experts group contributing to international progress in cybersecurity. So in conclusion, it's important to cultivate a future-oriented culture. Whether it's threat casting or any other framework you want to use, it's important to be thinking beyond just the here and now, beyond just the next few years. Threat casting is more than a methodology, it's a culture. It's about thinking ahead. We can bring together diverse perspectives, disciplines, and global insights to identify threats and plan mitigation strategies collaboratively. We can stay one step ahead of our adversaries, and I encourage you to make this something that you consider in your organizations, to shape a safer digital future together. If given the time, it'd be great to take you all through a, a, a rapid threat casting exercise, maybe there's something we can do in the future at an ISJ event. But I want to thank you for your time today for this brief overview of threat casting framework and why we should be using it to identi identify, detect, mitigate, and disrupt future threats. If anyone is interested in learning more about the framework and methodology for adoption within your own organization, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, here's my email address, and I thank you for your time.